Hey home bakers, it's Jack here, Bake with Jack.co.uk, bringing you your weekly bread making tip every single Thursday. And if you're making bread for the very first time, here's my top tips for you to consider before you begin. Roll it! Hello there, and welcome back to the Bake with Jack YouTube channel, where I share with you a little bit of my bread making expertise every single Thursday. If you like the sound of that and you're new, consider clicking subscribe before you go. Now last week we spoke about seven reasons to bake your own bread in 2020, but the question remains for you newbies, where's the best place to start? Well if I may, in a couple of weeks time I'd like to share with you a full on start to finish simple loaf of bread tutorial right here on the Bake With Jack YouTube channel. But before we get there, before we do that, there's a couple of things I'd like to tackle first in order to make sure you're well prepared. So here's the deal, you want fresh Bread. You want homemade bread every single week. It's 2020 and you want to make a start on your home baker's journey. You want a fresh, crisp, crunchy baguette. You want a soft and salty focaccia. You want brioche burger buns for your barbecue this summer. You want it all. It's your New Year's resolution to crack it and by Jove, this time you're going to stick to it, right? Well, just like most other New Year's resolutions, your ultimate goal is the product, not the process. The beach body, not the daily grind in the gym every single morning at four o'clock to make that happen. Well, you can forget all your dreams of the crispiest crust and those pedestal breads you've seen in the local artisan bakehouse, because let's switch it up a bit. It's my goal this year to bring you satisfaction regardless of your results. Because let me let you in on a little secret. Satisfaction regardless, that's the real name of the game. You are going to get there. Believe me, but you have to fall in love with the process. You have to feed off what you consider to be a failure. Deliberately recognize and appreciate the improvements you're making, no matter how small they may seem. Think in terms of the long-term learning game, not the short-term win. Exercise patience and you'll get there. As simple as it sounds, I'd like it if you tried it. And what would be really awesome after you tried it is if you felt like you wanted to try it again. That's all. And so this week I'd like to offer up my top tips for you beginner bread makers. Next week in video 129 we're going to go through the very few and very essential pieces of kit you're going to need in your kitchen at home to be able to make that happen. And then in video 130 we're going to hit full force the simple loaf tutorial start to finish. Let's go. Start simple. Make a loaf in a tin. Don't start off with a 17 step sourdough recipe with an auto lies and sprouted grains and home ground wheat kernels. As appealing as it may sound to introduce a 10 hour pre-ferment into your recipe, don't do it. Don't concern yourself with what a poolish is or a bigger or what it is that makes them different because even I don't really know the answer to that question and that's okay. A recipe with too many stages will make it difficult to identify any mistakes that might happen along the way. If anything does go wrong, it'll be harder to pinpoint exactly what that thing was and exactly when it happened. Start simple. Don't make a 100% wholemeal spout loaf because it's supposed to be better for you or a rye bread because you like the taste. Flour is isn't the same as flour. Different flours make different doughs with different characteristics that have to be handled in a slightly different way. We don't need to worry about all that stuff at this stage. Start simple. Make a loaf of bread you can make in one day. Made from a single dough, made with simple ingredients that be start to finish done in three to four hours. A white loaf of bread in a tin, for example. No fancy shapes, no nothing. Make it Call it, slice it, eat it, and you'll want to do it again. Recipes can be so long, often paragraphs or pages of text to get lost in, and you're not alone if you feel like giving the whole thing up before you've even started. Try not to get overwhelmed by the recipe. Read through the recipe, then you take your best friend, a pencil, a clean piece of paper and break it down in stages. I'm going to show you that, not with a pencil, with this nice pen, and you'll be able to see it. Here's an example of a bread recipe in a lovely book. I don't know who this guy is, you might have heard of him. 
before. But anyway, here's a recipe for a bloomer. It's meant to be for beginners. It says if you're new to bread making, this is a good recipe to start with. And he's not wrong, but look at this text here and look at this text here. There's a lot of valuable stuff in here, but we can make this easier on the eye for ourselves. Watch this. Now I've read through the recipe and broken it down into sections like this one here. Can you see this okay? Number one, weigh, mix and knead. Number two, rest. Number three, shape. Number four, rest. Number five, bake. Number six and seven are little bonus ones we'll add later on. Take a screenshot of this bit. Next, go back to the recipe again and pick up any bits that you don't think you're gonna remember or the bits that might help you out along the way to avoid going back to the recipe later when your hands are all covered in dough, sifting through the text, searching for that gold dust. Hold on. There we go, now I've got these little pointers underneath each number just in case I need them, including the temperature of the bake. The next thing to do is write down how long you reckon each step takes, judging by your abilities and what it says in the recipe. Now you've created a shortcut recipe, easy to read, easy to refer to, a condensed version that's far less overwhelming than sifting through all that text. This part may seem a little OTT, but bear with me, it's not a big deal, I promise, and if you're anything like me, this will help you out a ton. You've already made your condensed recipe, but now we need to know how long things are gonna take in total, and when we need to do the things we need to do. Add up all these times here to find a total time for the whole recipe, from raw flour to edible bread. And this is where secret tip number six comes in. Remember, you must let your bread cool down before you cut it, at least a minimum of an hour. We'll add that in here. Oh, there you are. Make sure you have enough time to complete it, and most importantly, enough time to eat at least some of your bread when you're done. Set that total time aside. Don't start a four hour recipe at 9 p.m. if your normal bedtime is 10 p.m. and you end up going to bed at 1 a.m. when you haven't even tasted your victory. Make sure you have time. And the next and final part of this I know huge process is to write down the times we're gonna do everything. Think about it for a second. If it's 10 a.m. when you start, you write 10 a.m. here. And then you continue counting the time, writing the times down in every stage you need to do. That way, you only gotta think about timings once. It's all written out, you just gotta do what your piece of paper tells you to do when it tells you to do it without referring back to anything all the time. Here you go. Get all your thinking out of the way and then you can literally just get on with things. Do what you need to do when you need to do it. You're good to go now and the best part is that you can tick stuff off. If you're anything like me, I like to tick stuff off as I go along so I don't lose where I'm at. And don't forget, it's worth mentioning, you still got your recipe, you still got your recipe book, so in the times where your dough is resting, you can refer and read and revise that bit of the book before, in case you forget anything, for the next bit. You've got time. There are a few essential pieces of kit that you need in your kitchen at home in order to make bread for yourself. It's not a lot of stuff, but everything has its place and has its purpose, and that's why we're gonna tackle that in next week's video. I hope you got a ton of useful information from this video, but not too much information to make it sound like it's a big deal, because trust me, it really isn't. Watch it a couple of times over if you really wanna get your head around things, and after that and next week's kit spec video, you'll be ready to hit the ground running for video 130, which will be your simple loaf of bread start to finish tutorial. And if that isn't a nice enough reason to subscribe to the Baker Jack YouTube channel, well, I just don't know what is. Don't forget, if you wanna go one step further, you can sign up for the Home Bakers Bulletin, which is a weekly email, goes out every single Thursday with this video in it, and all my content highlights from the week straight into your inbox. Links underneath if you wanna sign up to the Home Bakers Bulletin, and I look forward to seeing you next week for another weekly bread making tip, baby. Welcome, all you newbies and beginners. Let's smash it. See ya. There you have it. Thanks for stopping by for your weekly bread making tip. The start of your bread making journey is always a really exciting time. I hope you're excited for next week's video and the following week's tutorial. I'll see you seven days from today.